Hey yo, what's up and welcome. I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome to the Save the Crew career mode. It was a career that was recommended by one of you guys, suggested by one of you during one of my live streams. And I really, really liked the idea, but it's not just the name of the series. It's actually going to be an integral part of what we do here. It's kind of a scenario career mode series. So we're still going to be rolling with the designated player rule that I always have during my MLS careers. And if you're not familiar with that, basically it's a variation of a rule that exists in real life. But for us, it's going to be any player making over $12,000 per week in wages is going to be a designated player. And we're allowed three of those players in our team at one time. So it limits the, you know, really, really good players that we can have in MLS. And I'm going to be trying to keep the designated players as always as realistic as possible. I'm not going to go out and sign Neymar on a pre-contract and bring him in. So none of those types of players are going to be joining us in this career. But the save the crew aspect of this is as follows. In real life, the Columbus crew are in a bit of a situation right now. Their owner wants to either build a new stadium in Columbus, which he's having a lot of trouble. Him and the city of Columbus are going back and forth and it's, it's not a pretty picture. And neither one of them wants to concede anything. Each one wants to do it their own way and neither one of them wants to really come to terms. And the other option would be he wants to move the team most likely to the state of Texas, probably Austin it sounds like. And for our series, we're going to go under the assumption that we're going to be staying in the city of Columbus. And to do that, we do have to make some concessions and that will be mostly tightening the purse strings. In fact, in the first season, we're not going to be spending a single dollar on transfer fees. No players will be bought in the first season. I will only be bringing in possibly one player and that will be in the mid-season transfer window in the summer. We'll look to bring in a new designated player on pre-contract. Right now, there are only two in the team. That would be Higuain and Santos, which means we have one spot available. Higuain is an interesting one. We'll, we'll talk about him a little bit later, but he's on an expiring contract. So that represents a different opportunity. But we'll, again, we'll talk about that when we, once we start talking about the team. Once we get past season number one, it will go back to mostly business as usual. We're, we're allowed to buy players as we see fit, but we're really, really gonna be picking and choosing what we want to buy very, very carefully. Now, the idea of not buying any players in this first season may sound a little bit scary and a little bit tricky, but in reality, we're actually pretty well set with this team as it is. A lot of young players, as you can see, and a lot of players have really, really good potential, low to mid 70s, which makes them ideal players for MLS. That would make them, this team, if we could get it to all 70 rated or mid 70 rated, that's an elite MLS team with a couple of designated players sprinkled in. It's gonna be good. So really in season number one, what we're gonna be focusing on is growing the players that we have and also bringing in a couple of new young players via the Youth Academy. This team does have a pretty strong history of bringing in young players, especially recently. So we wanna keep that tradition going as well and really focus on building that Youth Academy in season number one. So now that all of that is taken care of, let's get in here and meet the team and discuss what we're gonna be looking at doing with this squad throughout this career. And to start off with, this is the starting 11 that we're inheriting here with Columbus. And let's start off with kind of the face of the franchise here in Federico Higuain. He's been here, I think he's going into his sixth year with Columbus this season. So he is the face of the franchise, a bit of a club legend here. He is kind of undecided in real life about what he wants to do with his future. He almost left at the end of last season, decided to come back on a one-year contract. So he is on an expiring contract right now with us. And I'm not sure if I want to bring him back or not. I'm not going to make that decision until the end of the year, which means if he wants to sign a pre-contract and leave in the summer, I'm going to allow him to do that. That is fully his, his decision. If we get to the end of the season and he's still here, at that point, I might re-sign him. We do have a ready-made replacement in Eduardo Sosa, but he's only 19 years old, needs a little bit of development. So we'll see at the end of the season. I'm leaning towards bringing him back if it's an option. If he wants to leave, I'll let him do that though. Now, up top is the new guy. It's Jossie Zardes replacing Ola Kamara. And I really, really like Zardes. In FIFA, he's a very, very, very good player. He's strong, fast, athletic, four-star skills, four-star weak foot, six foot two. I mean, he is a perfect, perfect player. Although I think he might be a little bit more effective out on the wing. 
but honestly we don't have any other options at striker right now i mean we have zardes at 70 overall john at 64 and then opoku down here at 61 zardes is, has the best finishing out of all of them and it's only 66 that's why i'm saying he, he might be better suited as a winger but for now he goes into the season as the striker if he plays well we'll leave him up there i have no problem leaving him as a striker We'll reevaluate it as the season goes along, though. Once we hit that summer transfer window where we're looking at bringing in a new designated player, I'm thinking that new designated player is either going to be a striker and we move Zardes out to the wing, or it will be a new winger, a, a designated player winger to play opposite of Pedro Santos, either on the left or the right, because Santos can play either side. So for now, Zardes is the striker, and I'm hoping he plays well because I really want to leave him up there. But if not, we can always adapt. And now we have the holding midfield spot, which is possibly our deepest position. We have Arthur and Trap there, both players with really, really good potential, especially Arthur is one of the players I'm really, really excited about. He's one of the players on the thumbnail, as is Trap, actually. So those two players are going to be really, really good for us. Um, in the defense, Valenzuela is on loan here, so left back is a priority for us. We're going to really, really be focusing on that in the Youth Academy because we don't actually have another left back, I don't think no we don't so uh yeah that's definitely somewhere we're gonna need to address as well as right back because harrison Affle, as much as i like him he's 30 years old he's gonna start declining pretty quickly here so fullback definitely is an area of emphasis for us in the center back spots that is another area of strength and very very deep we have mensa and abubakar i like both of them a lot both of them have really decent potential down here in the reserves we have cronal or cronale i can't remember how to say it if you know let me know in the comments is it cronal or cronale i can't remember uh we have williams we have sorrow everyone has like 70 to 75 potential as far as the center backs go i mean we are absolutely stacked at center back and then a goalkeeper maybe the crowning piece of this whole team is our young keeper zach stefan he's only 21 years old has plenty of potential the highest potential of anyone on the entire team and he he might be the future you know goalkeeper for the u.s men's national team he's that good he's got that, that kind of potential to him so i'm really excited to get in here get in here and see what he can do so now that we've met the team let's go ahead and start setting up our youth academy and i've learned my lesson with mls Going for these big scouts that have five-star experience, five-star judgment, they bring back players that are way too unrealistic for MLS. They're just way too good for us. Ideally, for MLS, it's best to stick with around a three-star, three-star scout. George Mathis here is the only one that's really even close to that. Three-star, two-star, that'll get the job done. He'll bring back players that have about you know 70 to 80 potential, which is really, really ideal for us. Every once in a while, he might find a really, really good player, which is very balanced it's, it's good for mls so i'm going to try to get two scouts the first one this one i'm going to put in the united states when i find another scout that has about three star three star uh experience and judgment i'm actually going to put him in ghana because right now columbus has five players from ghana which is a bit interesting I, I i don't know why they target players from there but since that is the trend that they're going with i will follow suit and I'll, I'll scout ghana first and then i'll probably move that scout around south america as well so like I said, this first scout is going to be in the United States to start off with. And like I said, we need wingers and we need fullbacks. And recently, in recent career modes, I found a lot of good wingers coming out of the United States. So to start off with, I'm going to go for three months in the U.S. And I'm only going to look for wingers. I think that should bring us back a pretty healthy crop of young talent for our youth academy. And actually, I was able to find another scout right away, Charles Jackson. Three star, two star, so that's pretty decent. And like I said before, we're going to put him in Ghana. I'm going to look for defensive-minded players, and hopefully he brings us back a couple of decent fullbacks. So since we don't have a transfer window to start off this career mode with, as we start in February, for reasons that nobody can really explain, we don't have anything to do other than partake in this preseason tournament. And the money doesn't mean a thing to us, because we're not buying any players anyway. But I do want to try this team out a little bit. I haven't played with a single one of these players ever before in career mode, with the exception of Jossie Zardes back in FIFA 16, I think it was, with Tigres. But at that point, he was like 78 or 79 rated, I think. So this is a little bit different. Plus, I didn't have him at striker. I don't think I had him out on the wing. So we'll see how Zardes does up top. And I just want to get an overall feeling of how this team plays together. Right here we go kick off in our first game with columbus these kits for columbus look really muted like they almost look white I i'm a little bit surprised zardes with the first shot that actually wasn't a bad attack to start off with a little bit weak on the finish but that's okay it was not bad 
Oh my goodness, that ball over the top from Houston. Talk about Route 1. Wenger inside. Oh my goodness. Ooh, Abubakar, nice block. Wow. Uh oh, Alexander coming through. Awful. Wow. Not sure how that shot actually got. I thought I thought Harrison Awful was going to get there. That Wow, Stefan had to bail me out. I don't know how he got the shot on target there. Here we go, Santos. Plays it for Zardes. Zardes. Playing it over here for Higuain. Higuain. Sliding it through. This is looking really good. Valenzuela across. Christian Martinez. It had to be Martinez on that side. Man, he needs to work on his finishing. I am training him. But my goodness, that was a bad miss. It was, on, it was an open net. Tight finish, but an open net. Zardes. Tries to move. He does well there. Jossie Zardes. Okay. See, I like everything that he can do. Beating players one-on-one. -on -one. He's absolutely phenomenal. He can actually play pretty well with his back to the goal as well as I just found out. And the finishing wasn't bad. That was a pinpoint finish from distance from Jossie Zardes. Maybe we are going to be okay. You know, maybe, maybe he does have what it takes to be that striker up top. He's looking good so far. Well, here we go. Martinez making a nice run here. Cuts it inside. Martinez looking for the space. He's not going to find it. Uh, probably misplayed. Uh-oh. Holy crap. Wow! Manotas, they really like going over the top for this with this Houston team. Manotas is actually doing a decent job of holding it up. That's going to be an open shot because it's a cross. And because of the sliders, I can't cover crosses. There were three yellow shirts in the box. Nobody recognized the ball coming in. That's just... That's going to happen. I mean, we, I, I, I want it so that the, uh, the CPU can score goals. And that was just... Nothing I can do about it. There's literally nothing I can do about that. So, that's unfortunate. Nice play by Minotas. I give him a lot of credit. He held the ball up very, very nicely. But, yeah, that, that's just that's just going to happen. Nice run by Arter. Zardes for Higuain. Higuain playing it through. I don't know why Abubakar is up there. Why is my center back all the way up there? I'm not even on attacking. I'm on balanced. What the heck just happened? I'm glad he was. I mean, he got a good chance. But, what was he doing? All right, we have a corner here. Let's take this short for Harrison Affle. Looking for a cross in. Back stick. And there is Jonathan Mensa, a center back. Okay, well, we only have three players on the entire team that are over six foot, not including the goalkeeper. Two of them are our center backs. The other one is Jossie Zardes. So we're not going to be the best on set pieces, but if we can open up a center back in the box like that, that'll work. That'll definitely work. Now let's go counterattack here. Come on, Nico Hansen. Cuts it inside around a man. That's a really nice run by Nico Hansen. Can we dink this ball in there for Zardes? Header! That actually wasn't too bad. Couldn't quite get enough power on it, but that was a nice play. Trap playing that ball forward for Nico Hansen. Inside for John. John looking for somebody. Gonna find Higuain, and Higuain buries it. Beautiful counterattack. Yo, John coming on there. He's been involved in a couple of good counterattacks. I've been slightly impressed with our backup striker. I've had to swing Zardes out to the wing just because we don't get very many subs in these preseason tournaments. So I had to put Zardes over there. But John's been good up top. You know, I've been pretty impressed. Uh-oh. Houston not giving up yet. Zardes. Oh, Stefan. Well, they all came together at one time. Jeez, that was close. And there's the final whistle. Wow. Okay, good first game for this team. Very, very solid. I, I would have wished we had more attacks. We really struggled in that first half to really create anything, but we did a lot better in the second half. So I, it gives me hope. You know, this team is not bad. And when, when they continue to develop, keep getting better, this is going to be a good squad. It might take us a year to really be a contender, but I do like what we have here. So I was planning on playing the final of the preseason tournament as well. Unfortunately, we got knocked out in the semifinals when I was simulating through it, so there is no final for us, but that's okay. I feel like I got a pretty good initial overview of what we have on this team, so I'm not too worried about playing another one before the season starts, but we do have our youth scouts back with their first scouting reports, so Charles Jackson in Ghana has found us three players, and honestly, this guy definitely, definitely not. I think John Omod Amodako looks pretty decent at 15 years old. Has a little bit more room to grow. I'll sign him. Kofi Niarko, I think I'll wait on. We'll see what happens with him. I'm, I'm not sure about him yet. And from the United States, three players as well. Jordan Evans, probably not. Dennis Park, probably not. Jay Rogerson, 
I like it. Oh, I, that's pretty decent. Even if he doesn't get all the way to that 90 possible potential, I'd say he probably reaches in the 70s minimum. So I think he looks pretty good. So we'll sign up Jay Rogerson as well. The other two will probably not sign them. Unfortunately, we're only 29 days into this career and we have a pretty significant injury to have to deal with and it's to Giassi Zardes of all people and actually this is his second injury already he had a dead leg calf earlier that was only four days not a big injury at all this one's eight weeks with a broken collarbone he's gonna miss the first two months of the season for the player that was supposed to be our star striker up top this is not a good start to this career at all I mean two injuries in 29 days that that's not a good sign for things to come now I think I mentioned the lack of depth at striker and it's this is the one position where I just I don't have anyone that I really like in, in, in there behind Zardes. So we have Adam John. He's six foot three, big strong dude. He's probably gonna be the guy that we're gonna turn to with Zardes out, but he's slow as molasses. His finishing isn't that great. It's better than our other option, though, which is Opoku. Now Opoku's 19 years old, has a little bit of potential to him, I think. He might be able to get around 70 overall. So I might have to start training him pretty quickly here given our severe lack of depth here at striker but both of them are going to get their chance we have quite a few games all in a row to start the season so picking up injuries now is really really not how we need to start this season so that is where we're going to end this first episode a little bit more action-packed than i was really expecting already some adversity to deal with early on before even the first game of the season and I did mention that we're not allowed to pay any transfer fees in this first season as the team's trying to save money to possibly build that new stadium in Columbus in our scenario here. But we can dip into free agency if we need to. And I have gone ahead and looked and I'm scouting up a couple of free agent strikers. I'm just not confident in what we have in there with John. And right now, Apoku's just not good enough to, to really be... A contributor on this team he needs a little bit of work a little bit of training and we don't have time to do that right now we need a striker for these first two months i think free agency is going to be the way that we're going to go but until i get those scouting reports back it's going to be adam john and opoku getting the job done for possibly the first two three four games of the season we'll have to see how it goes but that is it for this one if you did enjoy it make sure to let me know by leaving a like below subscribe if you're new and i'll see you when we come back for more save the crew see you. Thank <laughs> you.